We are live on YouTube. Perfect. Live on Instagram. Ooh. And What's up, IG. Ready for Twitter? Yep. You know that um, IG or Instagram or the gram? The gram. You call it the gram? No, I no, I don't. What do you call it? I say, I say Instagram, but then if I'm texting, I say IG. Um, yeah. What, do you that? call it the gram? I think so. But I was talking to my kids about this because they both call it something different. Right. So it's like a generational thing. So. Right. Right. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Bitcoin is .com backslash store. Grab your pre preloaded dimes, diamond key rings. Fresh batch just dropped. Already sold a couple, looks like, on the site. So those will sell out again. Physical Bitcoin to carry and wear. Like, this is my main, like, conversation starter. Like, I've got one spent one and one with a million sats on it. And, and this is my new way of just anytime someone tries to talk to me about Bitcoin, I just immediately pull this out, put it in their hand so that they can feel it. Somewhere I don't know, it was like face palm because you said, you said how many stats you have on the nine. Yes. Well, one of them's blank. So they're just, so that's, that's the whole, that's the whole thing is I teach people just straight from the beginning. You, you got to verify. You can't just take my word for it that one of these has money on. So today we um, yeah excited about the times. Those have been really cool. We're getting some feedback from people that, um, a great way to gift mm -hmm. uh, Bitcoin yeah. and Bitcoin jewelry. Yes, because it's it's just e-commerce. Like the website and the store, you can check it out. Bitcoin is com backslash store. It's just normal e-commerce. And so, if, if you're looking for a way for kind of your family and friends to give you Bitcoin that like they don't need to know anything about it, this is just the normal e-commerce paradigm that everyone's used to. And you know, they can ship to your address, ship to their address, and, and we'll get it out the door. Are you guys ready to talk about the Bible? Who, raise your hand, everybody. Who's ready to talk about the Bible? Babe, I can't talk. I'm doing my internet Bitcoin. You're, you're live right now. Everyone say hi, Danielle. Hi. Um, okay. <laughs> Go Bitcoin, she says. All right, so here's, here's what I've been thinking. Noah's Ark, right? Bible story. You don't have to be a Christian. You don't need to like believe in the Bible or Jesus or anything like that to, to appreciate the story. Because as for me, like growing up, I thought it was real. I thought like God was like really, really scary. Why would He kill all those people after the you know the flood? Right. Uh, with the flood, and then like have this rainbow and be like, I promise I wouldn't do that. It was just a weird story. Mm -hmm. The more I started to think about it in like uh, as a parable, as opposed to like a just literal story that happened, and there was two kinds of every animal. Whatever, the more helpful it became, right? And that, that happens with a lot of the Bible, quick short. But what does this have to do with Bitcoin? Well, Noah was an interesting guy because he felt like God was telling him, hey, a big flood's coming and you need to build this boat and here's how to build it, right? Mm -hmm. And then he just built it. And then people touched, like the whole time, people like gave him crap and like mocked him. And it's like, yo, they've never even seen rain. So, right. so it wasn't coming, right? And but he just kept he just kept building. He just kept building. What happens? Flood comes. Everyone else dies. No one joins. And I've just been thinking about like, what are we doing here? Like, what are we trying to do? Who are we? Mm -hmm. we've, we've talked about. We're not trying to convince anybody. You know, Bitcoin is a reality. Uh, that it is something that is happening already. And we're just going to like try to put our heads down and build, and then you know talk about what we're building as we go without like worrying about you know, what people say. I think, I think the Bitcoiners, we talked about last week how we're kind of always like the black sheeps in our family or <laughs> we always have like this, you know, flavor of the week. Someone says of, of like, oh, okay, Bitcoin, cool. I feel like, I feel like, I feel like Noah right. a little bit in that way. You know what I'm saying? Does that yeah. make sense or is that completely bad or crazy? No, it completely makes sense. And like, and I have stories this week that I can just, to, this last week was kind of my first week where we meet the road of like talking to merchants about the circular economy, kind of getting outside of my own theory bubble on what I think is going to happen. And, you know, I'm like talking to some restaurants, like talking to some entrepreneurs about what, what is the reality of a circular economy and how would it work? And like, and there's people on the other side of, you know, the internet that have already given me their feedback on how well they think it's going to work. And so it was kind of like, it was like a humbling experience to go out in the world and try, like try to do it. And so I could kind of, I, I could, I could relate a little bit with, Kind of the no story that like you're you're saying and how it, it had to have been weird at the end of day one to like so now you burnt a whole day of work it's hard to see the arc being built yet and now you just got to go to sleep go go home and know that like well just got to wake up and you know do more arc building tomorrow 
Um, wild people talk crap. Yeah, wild people talk crap. It's dry as ever. There's no rain. Right. So rain, yeah, that's a good part of the story. Like rain was not even a paradigm. Like water from the sky was not even a paradigm that they that anyone else in the town was like ready for. Right. Right. And that, that is there's a parallel to Bitcoin there. It's like there are so many things about Bitcoin that's like we can't even we can't even fathom right. how it's going to work and how it integrates and how we make the transition. But then again, Bitcoin just is. It continues block after block. Out of Did, minutes. Do you think Noah was an optimist or a pessimist? I mean, he was probably had to be an optimist at some level. Um, Showing up every day to build the ark isn't optimism. Like that, that's an optimist thing. Because the, the pessimist thing is to sit around and just like think constantly about the storm is coming. The storm is coming. Is this worth it? Is it worth it? like the, the optimist thing is. Like the action proves that he he's he's like foreseeing something that's going to happen that it isn't even inside his mental paradigm, and even more than that, he's like doing something about it. Exactly, and that's the that's the bigger piece. And, and I was thinking about this too because you know sometimes we get the question of is Bitcoin a threat to the legacy system or is Bitcoin here to sort of be this weapon against fiat? And I think there's a couple different ways to answer it. But what's fascinating is that it does kind of exist just like as a lifeboat, as an ark, as a something that's like, hey, the legacy system is crumbling. It's been crumbling for a while. Yeah. And now as we continue with QE infinity and printing money like crazy, it's only accelerating. Right. So Bitcoin just happens to be there. Right. As like a lifeboat. Yeah. This flood is coming, right? Yeah. And so I think that was the other parallel that made me think of the story and how it relates because it's not a matter of like um, we're using Bitcoin to take out fiat. Right. Like, I don't even like that thing anymore. It's more just right. like, no, that, that reality is imminent. It's coming. We, we kind of see the writing on the wall. Here's the solution. Yeah. I, Shireen and I, my wife, had a funny conversation this week about just, I, I was being a little bit funny about it. Now. How weird is this world? Like, we don't even believe in the same currency. <laughs> like, just my brain is just like, I believe in a different paradigm. And, and, and like that's great like that's crazy that there's just something else different out there and, and so we all have this right like where we there's people in our lives that are like not there's there's just acknowledging that there's two different worlds i think is like giving them like <laughs> like what is what does rock bell do he's like well of course like just giving i just love that from his thing the other day he was like he's like there's nothing really else to say except just a big of course like Everything you're saying, like, right. of course. Right, of course. Of course it's weird. Yeah, of course it's weird that the Dow continues to climb mm -hmm. while mm -hmm. there's record unemployment. And, you know, we don't even know if school is going to be a thing, like public school is not yeah. a thing. Do we know if that's a thing that's fall? I don't know. Idea. Who can tell you? No one can tell you. Who's right. in charge? Is it the president? Is it the governor? Is it the right. mayors? Right. Um, here at my apartment, is it like the property manager who decides right. to like, shut down the pool or whatever? Right. Where are they taking their kids from? Who's I don't know. Them? And so who are we supposed to listen to? I, so I, that was another thought this week. Like, dude, everything is so confusing and everything is so different now that like walk out your front door and try to follow all the rules. <laughs> try to be in compliance. Like like a lot of a lot of people, like, you know, they, they, a lot of Bitcoiners are very like, I don't know. They're already anti the system or anti whatever. And but but I, I would argue that we're all anti the system now. Like it's 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 there's so what you just said of like are we supposed to listen to the president? Are we supposed to listen to the governor? Are we supposed to listen to the property manager? Like why why do different stores treat the shutdown like differently? Right. Because everyone's trying to figure out on the go. And I think as soon as you let your brain go there, that like everybody's trying to figure out on the go. It like that can be a little bit unsettling and a little bit jarring of like could, who is in control, right? Yeah. Someone said on IG, it hasn't hit anyone yet how real Bitcoin is. LOL. Facts. It really, yeah, it really hasn't. Yeah, it's a really good way of putting it. Like, right. people are still trying to like negotiate with it or like either like resist it or fight against it. I would say even current Bitcoiners too. Mm -hmm. Like we last week, you you can go back and watch last week. We were just talking about how. Um, maybe all of us are thinking too small. Like we're all thinking too small in a lot of different ways. Like we're, we're not even, it, it's hard to even fathom how different the world is and how different, you know, Bitcoin is. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. So going back to circular economy, because mm -hmm. that is the art that we're building. Yes. So 
why do you think it's so important? You talk about it a lot. You're very passionate about it. I agree with you. Uh, like, I think it'd be good to just unpack that a little bit. Like, what, what, are, what are you seeing as you talk with uh, the restaurant that we're, we're trying to onboard? Right. I think, so, I got a cool, like, inbound, like, message on Instagram from, a, like, a company in Orange County that, I, and I asked, they were like, hey, yeah, I'm interested in taking Bitcoin payments. And I, and I was kind of just talked, chatting with them, and they said, it was, it was something like, I don't know anything about it, but I think it's going to be important. And I, I think that is a great illustration of like everyone has heard this word, but but people but we're all looking for ways to have it fit into our day to day life. Like everyone's looking for a little bit more of like how to get involved. Like we hear a lot about it, but how to get involved. And so the reason why I think circular economy is so important is because I almost think it's I almost think it's the most approachable thing to like to get involved in that that applies to everyone. Like not everyone is a developer. Like not everyone is going to be doing pull requests and like working on the, like the technology itself, you know. And then also, not everyone is an economist and is going to write, write these, you know, just giant papers about the macroeconomic like landscape. But we all do some sort of job, and most of us get paid in dollars. And then we all, what do we do with those dollars? We buy things for our family buy food, we buy housing, pay rent. And so like that, when, when, you, when we stop, stop putting Bitcoin in a box of just an investment and try to figure out how can you pick off of, like day-to-day -day things and shift it over to a Bitcoin economy, that's what starts to like, it, 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 it almost makes like, like grocery shopping exciting or, you know, paying yourself on bill exciting or whatever. And so the circular economy is not buying stuff you don't need. Buy, don't buy stuff you don't need. Like that's like the common thing. Across, it doesn't. I don't care what kind of money you're using. I don't care if you're using dollars or seashells or you know like anything or even video video game dollars, Fortnite coins. Like it doesn't matter. Don't spend money that you like. Don't spend money you don't have, and don't spend money on things that you don't need. Like what I wrote down on the board. Like I'm. Like here's here's my current stats, and I'm not. This isn't like a, this isn't like necessarily bragging. This probably are less than some yeah, people, yeah. more than other people. Yeah. Like in savings perspective, like I'm 50 50. Like my liquid savings, I got half in Bitcoin, half in dollars, and then in my spending and earning, I'm about five percent Bitcoin, ninety five percent like dollars. And so I like, I just use that as a, as a way to think about, I'm trying to think about each of these buckets all at the same time. And I'm trying to pick off, like, like I want 5% of the food I eat per week. I want it to come from Bitcoin because I'm trying to understand what this arc is going to be like. I'm trying to understand, like, I want to know like what the future is going to be like. And I want to know because, because I, I don't, like we all sit around on podcasts and think about what the future is going to be, what the future is going to be. But it's possible to buy food with Bitcoin now. Right. But the question becomes then, you're spending your Bitcoin. Yeah. So how do you earn it back? Well, why did I ask me this earlier? Like, yeah. But then I'm just like, it's just Bitcoin going out, not Bitcoin coming in. So right. And it feels like not a real economy to say, well, then you just buy more. Right. So then the question of earning Bitcoin right. comes into play. Right. And to me, like that's the hardest one to crack so far. That's definitely the hardest one to crack. And we have to, like, we can talk about, um, like, Stripe, this new Stripe app. Like, if people haven't tried the Stripe app from um, Jack Mahler's, like, got to download this. Like, the Stripe app is a game changer for this whole thing because, because just earlier this week, I, I took a different marketing client of mine and I was talking to him about Bitcoin, talking to him about Bitcoin. And we got to the point where it's like, okay, he needs a payment for the work this week. And I was like, hey, instead of a chat in through the mail, how we like normally do, you know, download this app, plug in your business debit card, you know, and pay like pay this invoice I'm gonna send you. Right. And so that allows both people to live in the economy that they want to live in. Right. Like it, it's tough. It's there's there's a bunch of we can it's way easier to come up with the reasons why this like why this won't work than it is like come up, you know, over this hump, over this hump, over this hump. But like, that's what we're trying to do here is show up and like talk about how to overcome the humps. And that's one is like strike as a game changer. It's letting, letting people live in the fiat world and then letting the businesses live in the Bitcoin world. And 
Because then, then you're, you're not giving anything up from your stack of Bitcoin that you're holding for you know, network adoption. Right. You're just spending fiat, but the business is receiving Bitcoin. Right. That is really brilliant. Shout out to Jack. Yeah. And the whole team. We love it. It is, yeah. Strike has really changed the game and it will continue that. Because people need to wrap their heads around all the different ways of interacting mm -hmm. and, and, and exchanging, right? So it's like we, we'd like them to uh, move to a different country. Yeah. It's like, there's a different currency here. <laughs> right. And the right. merchants here accept this other money that I don't know anything about. Yeah. And it requires you to start thinking differently and perceiving value differently and, and kind of doing exchange rates like in your head. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Strike is like this huge step forward in, in uh, migrating to this new uh, economy. It doesn't, it doesn't close the entire loop, right? You still have to deal with fiat because that is the world we currently live in. But Strike takes a step, like a huge, huge step forward in allowing uh, payments to be a thing, which is critical to the circuit economy. Totally. Because there, there's, yeah, there's two parts. There's one is the circuit economy in and of itself, which circular economy just means like Bitcoin is earned, spent, and saved all in the same time without going back to fiat. Like we're growing that circle. So, and then anytime new fiat enters, the circle is getting bigger and bigger. And so both, like both are important, obviously, and both, both are exciting. Yeah. All right, cool. What else on the list? We got, um, right. so the other thing about like comparing circular economy to the ARC is with Noah's ARC, if you just to know. Noah's ARC, to Noah's ARC. So George, George talked about Noah's ARC. There, there's another, like the account on, on Twitter, like you guys saw on Bitcoin Tina, like Tina stands for there is no alternative. And like that was that was Noah's paradigm with the ARC also. Mm. Like at the end of the day, even if he showed up at home after a day of building the ARC and his feelings are hurt because you know he's he's not getting he's not making any money and his friends are all making fun of him and everyone's you know just laughing at him. At the end of the day, there wasn't an alternative. Like he knew in his head as he's falling asleep at night that the flood is coming. Like water is coming from the sky, like bad news ahead. This this arc is what needs to be built, and so that you almost wonder too. Like you know, he wasn't a loud person. He wasn't he wasn't the type of prophet. A lot of biblical prophets are like in the street yelling at people, like repent. Like yeah. I think Jesus, like repent. Uh, the end is near, kind of stuff. Like whoa, bro, like settle down. No, it was just building an arc. Yeah, he wasn't. There's no account of him like just yelling at people. Yeah, as far as I. Can remember, I don't know that story anymore, but as far as I can remember, he was just like going about his business, head down, building her. Yeah. And I think there's something to that of like, you know, it's kind of hard to talk about a current reality and like the impending doom yeah. that's ahead without, you know, people just being like, yo, you are no fun. <laughs> right. I'm not right. inviting you to the next party. Right. And um, the response to that is just like, I guess I'm just going to put my head down and just try to build this alternative, build this. Right. This arc that, that has the potential to save us from the impending calamity that really like we've all built together. Right? Yeah. Um, and so it is kind of a sobering analogy of just like that's kind of where we find ourselves. Like a flood, right. flood is coming. Right. And it sucks. It sucks to have to acknowledge that. Um, but then Bitcoin exists yeah. as a hopeful solution. And like the arc is not causing the flood. Like the flood is happening for a different reason also. And I guess that's where it's like, it's like they're, they're connected, but like, we're not rooting for a flood. We're not, we're not at like the system. The system is choosing to do what it's going to do. Right. And when the flood comes, it's not like, yay, it's not like a celebration. No. When, the, when the economy collapses, in case you're not following the analogy here. Right. When the in, entire fiat economy collapses, when hyperinflation hits because you can't print money yep. in the face of reality as unemployment uh, accelerates and all that kind of stuff. When that happens, we're, we're, we're right. We're, we're right to predict it, but we're not like, yes. Why? And life on the arc and life post arc is not going to feel like, <laughs> like there is no normal again. Right. There's no normal. There's no going. And so as if, if you know, interacting with Bitcoin and interacting with Bitcoin merchants is not going to feel the same as swiping your car. It's, it's just not, it's going to feel different. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, it's almost like we, we have on the board today too. We talked about like change is uncomfortable. Like everyone kind of knows that. And, and like even people that want a revolution 
might not even still understand that like change is just really hard. Change of all time is hard. The reason why people's anxiety over, you know, coronavirus and stuff is just so high every day is because as change, like we're all being forced to change on the spot every day. Mm -hmm. Change is hard. Uncertainty is hard. Not being able to make plans. I think like that's the hardest thing about the current time we inhabit is it's so hard to plan anything. Right. Um, is is there going to be a uh, football season? Is there going to be a uh, vacation in my future? Right. <laughs> Am I going to be in an office? Like um, should I like companies? Our companies. I think one of the things companies face right now is hiring and, and staffing. It's just like, well, we need help because you know we're growing or whatever. But is the economy going to totally just like shut us down to where we can't afford to hire people? Yeah. And so people that need jobs are like in this limbo state, and so no one can make plans for anything right now. Yeah, and that's and so from the, from the business perspective, that's why like having Bitcoin as an option on like on your books and on your website and at your point of sale systems like. It doesn't seem that crazy to me to me anymore. That's that the reality of like this. The reality of what we're building is setting in of like like every day is not going to feel like this. Like, I'm not going to get a dopamine rush every single day from like talking about Bitcoin. Some days are more sobering than others, and about just like having to answer the same question like you know over and over again, and having to real like explain like this isn't. You know, maybe it's not a get rich quick scheme. Maybe it is a don't get forced slowly scheme. Like maybe it is like just having this redundancy of a different economy as a backup for when this one stops working. That's what we're we're like. This is the backup pay button. Like it's anyone can argue about like whether whether it makes economic sense or whatever to do it right now. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it didn't. It didn't make economic sense to the rest of the town for Noah to be building an arm <laughs> when the dust was dry. Like you're right. That doesn't make any sense. But does it make sense to build a backup payment button so that, you know, on if and when something happens, mm -hmm. you're ready. Like your business is ready. Yeah. I mean, just going back to Tina, like there, there is no alternative. Yeah. So if like, Bitcoin wasn't a thing, what would we be talking about right now? What would we be talking about as the solution of like, hey guys, the Dow really shouldn't be climbing the way that it is given right. economic reality. What should we do? <laughs> right. Right. We don't talk about that because Bitcoin is right. And I mean, and again, why like I think why do we all hang out as like a community, like on these, you know, free websites and just constantly every day in Telegram and stuff like that? Because I think because we've all searched for other alternatives. And like for some reason we all arrived here and are like working on this. And it just doesn't do I, I think we've all experienced in different ways. Me, like I I can't listen to people talk about other alternatives or other solutions anymore. They oh. don't, because they don't feel like solutions. They're, they're not even using the word solution. All it is is complaining. So, so in that sense, like I, like, I feel like an optimist. Like, I feel like an optimist when, I, when I'm out talking to people about the circular economy and saying, like, no, like this, the, you need a backup pay button. Yeah. Like, that's the reality. Right. You need a backup button. Right. Like a flood is coming. Yeah. Good news. You got good news. We, there's a backup economy. Yeah whole other economy that's beautiful like yeah because it would be depressing if you're just like the you know the end is near right and repent and all that kind of stuff like right. having something to point people to is huge so totally i've been encouraged by that and talking with merchants because they see it they see the writing on the wall yeah yeah Word. all right it's a good place to wrap up yeah cool so we can just do a quick scan anybody throwing any questions Let's see a couple more more orders Cool. Get your open times. Yeah, remember everybody, bitcoinis.com backslash store. Carry and we are physical Bitcoin. Send us feedback about those two and what else you'd like to see. We'll sure. see you here next week on Monday Night Bitcoin. Thanks for tuning in. Later, everybody.